In this video, we're going to look at two standards, um, and really both of them have to do with domain and range. We're going to look at A2A, which is domain and range focusing on linear functions, and then we're going to look at A6A, which is focusing on domain and range of quadratic functions. Even though we're doing a different type of functions, linear versus quadratic, um, I think these two ideas tie themselves together pretty well. <clears throat> and so, to start, we've got to know the definitions of domain and range, and, and these can be represented a number of ways, but we know that the domain is basically the set of all your x values, which is the group of all your independent values of a function. And so that would make the range a set of all dependent or y values. You need to have this memorized. If you keep getting these mixed up, just think about alphabetical order. In the same way that x comes before y in the alphabet, D comes before R in the alphabet. So, so it's just, um, if, if, if you can't ever remember, oh, is domain Y or is domain X, just think about alphabetical order for both of those. So here's our first problem. Um, and so maybe have a crack at this and then uh, hit play and then we'll finish the video. But basically what we've got here is we have this function. This function is c equals 3495u plus 6.25. Well, we've already established that our domain is made up of all of our independent variables, our independent values, um, which is really our x's, okay? And then our range is made up of all of our dependent values, um, which are our y values. The problem is in this problem, it doesn't use x and y. It uses c and u. So we have to determine um, in order to figure out what the domain is. That's what we're looking for. Well, I'll be, I'll be color-coded. We'll talk about domain in blue for this problem. To find the domain, we've got to figure out what's, what's my independent variable. What is my x? We have u and we have c. So I've got to ask, what depends on what? Does um, Let's see. It says c represents the cost, right? Does the cost depend on the number of uniforms, or does the number of uniforms depend on the cost? And I think it's safe to say that um, the cost depends on the number of uniforms. Because the more uniforms you purchase, the more your cost is going to be. So this is dependent. The cost is going to, all the cost values are going to make up our range, and all of the u values are going to make up our domain. So what we have to ask ourselves to find our domain is what, va what values can u take in this problem? What could u be? So u is the number of uniforms bought. So how many uniforms can we buy? Because if we know the number of uniforms we can buy, that's going to be the domain for this function. Here is the information that's important. If there are at least eight players, but not more than 12 players, that tells you how many uniforms you're gonna order. You're gonna order in between eight and 12. Eight would be the minimum you would buy. 12 would be the maximum you would buy. I like H as the answer to this problem. One thing's important to know is, notice here we have the inequality notation. Here we have just this set notation that includes the commas. This idea here is, is important because basically it's saying we can order 8 or 9 or 10 or 11 or 12 uniforms. By using the comms, it shows that we're not going to include 10.25 because it wouldn't make sense to order 10.25 uniforms. Um, but to summarize, in a problem like this, always identify what that dependent variable is and what that, excuse me, I take that back, identify what that dependent variable variable is and what the independent variable is. Um, I should have maybe not used so many abbreviations in here, but if you can identify what's independent and what's dependent, that's going to give you some pointers as to what is the domain and what is the range. All right, give this one a try and then hit play. But it says a student rode a bike to a recreation center. The graph shows the student's distance in miles after riding the bike for X minutes. Well, I'm already thinking, okay, X is the number of minutes. That might help. Um, and so we know that that's on our x-axis right here. But this problem asks for what is the range of the, for the function in this situation. So, so let's start by identifying. We know that um, the domain 
is going to be our x, or the set of all of our x's. And we know that the range is going to be the set of all of our y's. So let's figure out which is which. What is x and what is y in this problem? Well, they tell us up here, they tell us that this is the number of minutes. And that means the range in this case would be the miles. And it's pretty easy to tell in this one because you know that your range is going to be listed as your y. It kind of goes on the side here of, of your graph. And the domain is going to go on the bottom. So if this question is asking us for the range, we're looking at what all values, what all different numbers of miles can we have here. And if I'm looking at this, I see it looks like the highest number of miles is 9 and the lowest number of miles is 0. It's the y-coordinates of my lowest point and my highest point. I'm looking top to bottom to answer a question about range. So if you answered numbers greater than 0 and less than 9, that's going to be the right answer. If you answered F, you answered the domain. F is describing the domain. Okay, let's move on to our next one. What are the reasonable domain and range for this quadratic function? Now, um, it's describing a quadratic. It gives us an equation. For a problem like this, what always helps me is to get a good look at the graph of that function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my graphing calculator. And I'm going to graph this, and we'll just take a look at this problem. So let me um, pull up my calculator. I've got one over here. Okay, here it is. So I'm just going to go to y equals, and I'm going to graph x squared minus x minus 6. So if I graph that, there's my parabola. Now, if I'm um, looking over here at my answer choices, we can talk about domain first. Um, this first answer choice says the domain goes from negative 2 to 3. Well, if it goes from negative 2 to 3, um, that means that they're only looking at the zeros. The domain actually goes further than that. It goes further to the left, and it goes further to the right. The domain, really, for pretty much all quadratics is going to be all real numbers. So I like narrowing it down to C and D um, over here just because uh, the domain isn't going to be limited on these problems. Now let's talk about the range. The range says here values greater than or equal to negative 5.25, and here it says values greater than or equal to negative 6.25. Let's go to our table. So if I click on second and then I click on table, let's just see if this kind of gets lower than negative 5.25. And if I look down here, I can see that at its lowest point, you know, on the graph, you can kind of see the lowest point is going to be somewhere over here. It's going to be somewhere close to where maybe x is in between 0 and 1. Whatever that point is is going to be the lowest y value. And so if I go back to my table, we can see in between 0 and 1, it's going to be there. Now, if I go to my table settings, I can even get a little more specific. Um, I'm going to change my table to go by 0.5s. And then look what we see here. We can see that when x is 1 half, y is negative 6.25. So that's important because that means this is not our lowest y value. This is our lowest y value. If I return to my graph, our graph is y values that are greater than or equal to negative 6.25 because this is negative 6.25 right here. All the y values of each of these points is going to be greater than that. So long story short, I think graphing that gives us a better look at the function, but our answer on that problem is going to be D. Remember, the domain is pretty much always going to be all real numbers for quadratics, but our range will be restricted. Which graph represents a function with a domain of all real numbers? Oh, but it says domain is greater than or equal to negative 7 and less than 2. So basically, our domain goes from negative 7 to 2. Okay? But one thing that it says is important is it says that our domain could be equal to negative 7, but it's strictly less than 2. Okay? This notation right here, this inequality notation is good to know. That's where you're going to put your minimum x value. That's where you're going to put your maximum x value. And then we use these less than symbols between it. Since it says greater than or equal to negative 7, notice how I have the or equal to there. But it says strictly less than 2, so I don't have the or equal to there. That means it might be negative 7, but it's definitely not going to be 2. So let's just go to our graphs and see which one has x values from negative 7 to 2. So if I look here, 
That goes from negative 2 to 7. That's no good. If I look here, once again, we're looking only at the x values, only looking left to right. That goes from negative 4 to 1. Here, that goes from negative 3 to 2. Here's the one that we like, because notice, look, this lowest x value is a negative 7, and that highest x value is a 2. Notice it's got the closed-in circle to show that it could actually be equal to negative 7, but it's got the open circle to show that it won't ever be equal to 2. Okay, But basically, D is going to be our answer on that one. This is our last question. So it says, what is the range of the relation if the domain is those numbers? So, so basically we have this function. I'm going to write out f of x equals 2x squared plus 3x. And then we have our domain is equal to negative 2, negative 1, 0. Now, basically these domains, these domain values, we've already talked about this. These are x values. So I'm going to take negative 2 and substitute in for both x's and work it out. And my answer is going to be the first element in my range. Then I'm going to do the same thing with negative 1, put it into both, work it out. I'm going to do the same thing with 0, put it in and work it out. Those three answers that I get will make up the three values in my range. So let me just do one of those real quick. So just to show you an example, like for example, if I put in negative 2 into my function and worked it out, so I just took that first value from my domain and worked it out, and so then we have... Um, 2 times 4, because negative 2 squared is 4, plus that becomes a negative 6. 8 plus a negative 6 eventually becomes a 2. That means when um, I put negative 2 into my function, a 2 pops out. So a 2 is the first element of my range. That means we can already kind of eliminate answer choices A and D because they don't have a 2 anywhere. But basically, I'd repeat this process for negative 1 and 0, and that would give me the other numbers. Now, just to show you how to do this on the calculator, I'm going to bring back our calculator friend. And I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to type in that function. So 2x squared plus 3x. Now, if I go to my table, what we're looking for, let me reset my table settings real quick. We can have this do the work for us. That way we don't have to worry about making simple mistakes. We want to look for the x values of negative 2, negative 1, and 0. Well, at negative 2, our y value is 2. That was already the one that we worked out. If we do the same thing for negative 1, the y value is negative 1. And then we put a 0 into our function, the y value is 0. So basically, 2, negative 1, and 0 are going to be our three range values when our domain is the given one of negative 2, negative 1, 0. So I'm looking for the answer for with 2, negative 1, 0. That is going to be B. The end.